Okay, hello, and uh, this may look a bit strange, uh, mostly because this audio I'm recording now is a uh, post-edit. Um, yes, I screwed up the microphone road system. I think what I've done is turn the system on the camera, but not the little um, clip that's on the seatbelt you can see there. Um, so as I'm playing it back, there's no audio, so the introduction is uh, silent. So <laughs> I've had to do a post-edit introduction. <laughs> so the basics. Um, this is Westbury to Great Chevrolet, a route that we've covered many a times in <laughs> in these episodes. Um, this one is in RX fifty one EXM. This is the Plaxton bodied uh, Volvo B ten M. So ten litre mid engine. Uh, Volvo engine um, with a six speed manual. Uh, I've done a video of this before, but uh, we're going to do a, a proper drive this time. And I'm, I'm going to use the camera on the uh, tripod on the board behind on the left hand side uh, rather than the POV cam because then you get to see the uh, gear changes properly as well. Um, the reason I'm using this coach is because my coach is in for a monthly inspection it's just one of those things legally we do every month it goes through what's called a PMI um, so I had the offer to take this one so I thought while well, this was allocated to me I thought I'd bring the GoPro along and do a video so uh, in a moment I'm going to pull over and then set up the camera up behind um, so I'll uh, see you in a bit Right, so here we are, just pulled into the lay-by to set up the camera, hopefully that'll stay there, hopefully you can see, and here, I think I'll set it up right now. <laughs> right, so the first thing is to concentrate on the main road a moment, because I've got a, I'm just joining the A361. one after the silver car go 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 straight in second let's check the third oh. clutch fourth there we go and oh right so I got a lot of <laughs> more things to think about today. Uh, changing gear <laughs> is one of the additions. <laughs> um, thank you to whoever posted on the one of my other driving this coach videos. I think it was the last one I'd done, I think, to the petrol station and back. Someone commented about double D clutching makes the gear changes, e Ugh, uh, gear changes easier. Well, driven that coach until now so I just had it in my mind I thought you know I'm gonna try that sure enough it's a lot better so thank you very much for that I haven't done it down the box yet but uh, usually because I'm braking at the same time I'm not worried about that changing up now is uh, a lot more smoother than just holding the clutch and in hearing it grind in double D clutching makes it a lot more smoother that's brilliant one thing in mind, if you're driving a manual coach, um, some of you that I know are doing your PCV tests, um, depends. Not a lot of vehicles are manual nowadays. See, uh, there's a lot of automatics. Um, this is only one of two in our fleet now, it's manual. But it's remembering uh, what gear you're in. If you're using a, driving a manual car, you're used to that sort of thing, but uh, just remember it's not a little box, it's a big box. And when you've got a lot more things to think about, that's also an addition to remember what gear you're in. It's surprising when I first drove a manual coach compared to a car. 
I was thinking about how much I'm gonna have to keep looking at this you know along with all the blind spots and everything else how I'm gonna have to look at the rev counter but actually you don't really need the rev counter I can hear the engine just that note there I can tell I'm probably in the middle of the green zone 15,000 10,000 or so that's probably up to 15 yeah just above that Probably because it's a mid-engine anyway, so it does make it easier to hear. It's not that far back, really, the uh, the engine. Also, if if you're worried about doing your um, test in a manual, which some people do, a lot of people I know don't nowadays. I did mine automatic. For that reason, is I've got a manual car license, and therefore nowadays. At the time this video was done, mine was probably, I doubt this will change in the future. Um, but you can do your test in an automatic coach and then be able to drive a manual after. Which is what I'd done because I had a manual car license. So they put me through my test in an automatic. It makes it easier to do the test as well. And then I can practice in a manual coach in my own time and leisure, not have to worry about getting minors for selecting the wrong gear, etc. etc. Looking down the road now at the moment just to check there's no heavy vehicles coming up the uh, coming up the hill. Didn't see any trucks, but I might be caught up surprised here. It's for this blind turn here, there's a truck now I just saw in the gap. Where is he? Is he gonna turn left? There he is. He's going straight on, so that's okay. He said thank you for spotting him. One second, yes, uh, gone. Let me run a go. Oh, I should have used the clutch there, shouldn't I? There we are. acceleration down just letting the hill threw me down there uh, increasing my speed there this I don't know why it always feels like the perception of this vehicle I don't know what it is it feels like you go much faster than what you actually are for some reason I feel like I'm breakneck in speed now I'm doing 40 mile an hour it feels like I'm on 50 55 at the moment don't ask why <laughs> I suppose it's the road perception. I'm sat a bit far, probably a bit more forward than uh, what I'm used to. Don't think it's the seat height or anything that's doing it. It's just um, probably because I'm a bit far forward. I'm sure someone has mentioned before this is the seat position is much more forward than the Irizars and the Turismos. And down the bouncy road. I'm going to try a uh, new series soon, hopefully. A bit of a mini series. Uh, haven't come up with a title for it yet, but it will basically be um, using the POV head cam again. Um, but it'll be a, a guide to driving a coach, I suppose, if I can, for lack of better words. <laughs> it'll be going down different types of roads, like your A roads bit of motorway if I've ever got that empty at any time. Um, Checking in six, yep. Um, bit of country lanes like the road down there. And it'd be for those that are starting to do their PCV test. Um, a few hints and tips of what to expect on your practical driving test. You should do this sooner than later because as I say, I've got no I wouldn't say I'm the experienced driver, obviously, because, as I said in the last episode, I only did my test a couple of years ago. But it's worth, while I've still got some of it fresh in my head, what the test was like. Give me some hints and tips. Not only just for that, but for any um, 
tips for after passing the test as well. Um, just generic driving tips, I suppose. Um, probably won't be useful to everyone. Um, there'll be others that have got better answers to what I've got for certain situations. But as all drivers, we've all got our own techniques. Um, you know, that's all I can point out, really. But um, one thing thrown a tip now really but one thing is um, before you do your practical test the best thing I found was driving my car for about a month I was practicing again of keeping the two hands on the wheel you know it was like once you've done your car test you start doing this on the armrest and lean out the window and all that of course I was trying to build myself back up again put two hands on the wheel don't do all this um, you know spinning the hand on, on the palm of spinning the wheel on your palm of your hand business and all that sort of thing try and remember the basics and get it drilled into my head the more i do it in my car the more i'm going to remember to do it in my coach test as well so going down into Roten. see some brake lights let's downshift is driving a manual difficult depends how you put it um, there was one manual I had Bova, which was absolutely awkward because it was literally like st the steering was like this was the neutral area, it was steering around like that. Um, you got used to it in the end, but at first it was quite awkward. This one ain't too bad. I've, I think the first time I did struggle a little bit, I kept putting into sixth instead of third, uh, it's fourth, um, and all that sort of thing, but. I think it's just one of those things. There is no technique. It's just one of those things that you build up as second nature. Um, you do make mistakes. I've done the same thing. I thought I've changed into sixth. I've put it down into the other gear and to put it back in neutral and try again. thinking do I change up mm, not really I'm in the middle of the green zone it's not too bad I might need to slow down uh, shortly because there are parked cars usually on this side of the road down here anyway but this one's a bit of a blinder I can't see any cars coming up so I'm committed to go I'll hold it till the bend around the corner here. Then I'll change up if it looks a bit clear. So it might be a lorry coming around this bend. Look okay. shift for this bend here get the revs up for that little incline there get some speed so I can change up
It's a common spot for unloading, but the advantage is once you go around there, you can actually you've got this dead straight road so you can see whether there's any traffic coming along or not. So we're coming down to Black Dog Crossroads now. I did this earlier on and got the angle slightly off, so I'm hoping I can uh, do a bit better today. Oh, watch out, pheasant. Right, come out here, this way. Swing around, get your keels off. Ooh, a bit better. steering wheel around. What you can see is I'm going to pull away in second. would normally do that, but because we're on a slight downhill slope there onto the uh, main road, we can pull away a bit quicker so I'm not having to do first straight into second. And uh, especially when you've got a blind bend like that, it makes it easier to uh, build up your speed onto the road. So pull away from second there, but otherwise standard it would be first. Get the coach moving straight into second then. So as always, first is the pull away gear, but um, I've always found that you want to use that literally. Pull away as soon as you get going into second is easier than if you pull it into first and let it go into the red zone, you're going to struggle like hell to get into second, unless you double D clutch, of course. So, turn right, we come up to the Great Chevrolet Road now. already was I? No, I don't think I was. Keeping this gear. I haven't been down here in this coach. I've only ever really taken my Turismo down here before. So I'm having to find my own techniques of what gear to use down here. Slow down for this car who's not going to slow down. Keep out a little bit, just so I can see if anything's coming. They can see me a bit earlier as well. Slow down for this car here. I think it's trying to slow down, yep. Okay, don't want to scratch his 23 plate BMR electric. Traffic lights gone, have they? Oh, okay. I know they're still doing works up here, so I half expected the uh, Temporary lights will still be there, but they've, uh, they've gone. Oh, taking half the tarmac away, that's why. Oh, they've put new uh, bridge structure bits in, by looks of it. They've had night closures down here, so I'd imagine that's what they've been doing. Right, let's. Uh, Flush this fan through. Make it easier for everyone. Leave it in second because we're going downhill. Lift the clutch slightly. There we go. Just like that. Probably clutch third. Went in a lot easier there. Um, 
I'm gonna leave it here actually. Yeah, I'm gonna leave it in third. It's got a bit of a blind bend there. We're coming into the narrow parts now. I wanna be doing 20. Well I'm at 15 mile an hour. Well that's alright. Keep it in third then, because we're gonna be going up hill now and we've got this twisty bit here. Getting ready to drop in case I need to. Just got away with pulling it there. The arc clear run through. Alley of Doom. So all clear. It's also why I quite like a manual, is, um, you know, especially if you took that era off from last time we're talking about, it'd be, it'd be changing up and down the gears because it's an auto. Well, my one tends to be steady, I mean, because that's just a straight six speed, but sometimes it goes in a gear where you don't want it to do. So at least, you know, I can just park it in third. That's why I want it. That's where it stays. Not suitable for a dover to, oh yeah, that's all right. And it's second, because we'll let this car, oh, if I can get it second, where's she going? In there, that's all right. Right, and here we are. Right, use the lay-by just to get my whole vehicle into the lay-by. And then, um... Um, go backwards. That's not it, is it? That's bloody nope. Oh, and on that's that way. Oh, great, there we are. <laughs> I think which way reverse was in. <laughs> As I say, I've tuned it for a while. <laughs> there we are. We found reverse. Carefully use my mirrors because I haven't got a uh, rear camera. I'm spoiled with my rear camera down on my side in my Turismo. Right. There we go, that'll do. Right, and put on to rest for now. Engine off. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. Put the lights off. And, um, yeah, hope that was a good episode for you. Um, seeing the B10M a proper drive this time, rather than just the short videos I've got driving this coach. And so, yeah, hopefully the next episode might well be this um, new series I was talking about earlier. Um, the basics of driving a, a coach, PCV. Um, so when that come about, I don't know. If not, it might be a normal episode if uh, something else comes up I think might be interesting to use as episode 12 or 11 or the next number up from this one anyway. <laughs> but uh, until then, um, see you on the next episode. Also remember, like and subscribe for more of these videos. Till then, take care. Ta-la. <laughs>